Hey, how's it going? So I just filmed a quick Pixel 2 XL video review, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm going to do an essential phone review because these are the two kind of the, they're the two phones that I was most interested in recently. I do have an iPhone 10 on order, so I'm going to be testing that out as well. If you are new to the channel or if you're a regular tech stuff isn't my norm around here. It's usually guns and gear and survival and that kind of stuff. So tech reviews aren't normal, though I do do them from time to time. I know I have a lot of tech subscribers that are asking for tech reviews here and there. So I'm going to do them once in a while, but it's not really going to be a regular thing on the channel. So if you're into tech, hey, get subscribed. If you're into guns and gear, hey, get subscribed and you get a little bit of both. All right. So the essential phone is this sweet, sweet, nearly bezel-less, though it does have a chin down here, Android phone. Uh, one of the coolest looking hardware, one of the coolest looking phones from a hardware aspect that's out there today. Uh, you know about some of the downfalls, camera's not great, uh, whatever, it doesn't have an AMOLED screen, though the screen is very, very nice. Uh, I'm gonna get into some of the, just the real world, my real world thoughts on things. So this is how I do reviews on the channel. I don't talk so much about specs, you know, guns, knives, flashlights. Uh, that's the stuff you can just read on the website. Why are you watching a review when you can in two seconds know everything you need to know on the website about that kind of stuff? So I talk about real world use. I talk about practical things. I talk about the stuff that when I am YouTubing reviews, I skip through the, this, this is a 3500 milliamp and my screen on time was, yeah, whatever, I can read all that stuff way faster than you can tell it to me. So when I watch YouTube reviews, I care about personal experience with products, personal experience with gear. How's it feel in pocket? How's it, how's it feel in hand? How's the real world performance of this or that? So that's what this review is gonna be. And let's just get into it. So the most impressive thing about the Essential Phone really is the bezel or lack thereof. It has a tiny little notch here, which really when you use the phone, you don't even notice. It's not a crazy notch like on the iPhone X. Uh, so the bezel or lack thereof on this phone, though it does have one on the bottom like I mentioned earlier, is, is the main thing that drew me to this phone. I've always hated bezels for the last, I've hated bezels before it was cool to hate bezels. Uh, but this phone really gets it right in the bezel department. Uh, it gets it right in a few departments, but not all the departments. And that's why it's not going to be my daily driver. And that's why I am ultimately going to go with the uh, Pixel 2 XL. But let's get into some of the pros and cons of this phone. Bros bezel, yes, obviously. The, one of the hugest cons is this thing is just basically like a mirror. Like you can actually kind of like use it as a mirror. So this is my camera, it's kind of dark back here, but it's, but what that means is it's a fingerprint magnet, it's horrible. And I intentionally, it, it kind of, seeing all these fingerprints kind of grosses me out, but I left them on there uh, so you could see what it kind of looks like after real, world, real use. They are coming out with, I think, a gray model, which is a matte or satin, which will be a huge, huge improvement. Granted, most people are gonna put on skins. Thing to note, there aren't many cases out there for this phone, but there are some skins available, so if you wanna put a skin on it, awesome. While we're back here, it does have the fingerprint sensor, which is in the same place as the Pixel. It's great. They just released a, over their update uh, that allows you to use the fingerprint to swipe down on the notification bars uh, like they do on the Pixel. So that's one of my favorite features of the fingerprint is swiping down the notification bar. Because when you're holding your phone in hand, reaching all the way up to the notification bar is one of the biggest pains for me. So being able to do that without having to kind of switch my grip and reach it up. Though this phone, you know, is pretty, it's pretty good in the hand. It's pretty easy to reach that top part. Uh, it's easier just to swipe down on the fingerprint. Well, you'll see back here also are dual shooters. We have a uh, color lens and a black and white monochrome. And we have these two little magnetic things over here that you can uh, attach accessories for. I think the only accessory out now is a 360 camera, which I don't care that much about, but if I was into 360 cameras, it would be really cool. And then you got the flash. Uh, so the rear facing camera in, in real use is pretty good. The black and white, the back, black and white photos are really good, uh, but no image stabilization I think, uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm not misspeaking on that. No image stabilization, videos not that great. Uh, photos, there's so many good shooters out there. The, the Note, the, all the Samsung phones, the Note 8 especially, the Pixel 2 XL obviously, the best shooter out there. 
iPhone 8, the iPhone 10 has amazing cameras. So in a world, the, the V30 also has a pretty good camera. So in a world where there's so many high-end excellent cameras, this isn't the best. But a year ago, it may have been the best. Or it would have it uh, given the other phones a bigger run for the money. But the camera right now is completely adequate. The camera app is a little bit laggy, though they keep releasing updates to us and it keeps, keeps on getting better. Uh, it's... They call it the essential phone because it's minimal. For a minimalist, this or the Pixel is really what you're gonna wanna go with, but I think they kinda overdid it a little bit in the camera app. You don't really have much adjustability. You can't really adjust the settings. Uh, if you're into photography, the camera app is gonna be very limiting. Granted, you can load other camera apps on here if you want, uh, but it doesn't do any of the fancy stuff, portrait mode, anything like that. Uh, so it's, it's an okay camera. It's not bad by any means. What is bad is the front camera. This front camera, it's garbage. It's, it's, I don't know, taking pictures with the front, the, the selfie cam is, I feel like I'm using a phone that's four years old or something. It's, they really drop the ball on the front facing camera. Now, if you don't take selfies, that doesn't really matter. Uh, me, I, I film video for YouTube on my phone sometimes. Sometimes I'm using the front facing camera. You know, my, my girlfriend wants to take selfies or whatever. I use the selfie camera. Uh, I don't really take and post selfies, but I do use it for other stuff. So having a front-facing camera that is garbage really is a, is a big tick against this phone, probably the biggest tick against this phone that I have. Uh, so rear shooter is good, front shooter, garbage, but it's okay, and camera app's not that great. So if you're really into photography, this isn't gonna be the best camera out there for you, unless you're into black and white photography specifically, then this camera is probably one of the best out there if you're into that. So screen, screen is great. It's not an AMOLED, but for an LCD screen, it's, it's really good. Colors are great, good contrast. It's just, it's a really beautiful screen. Uh, and with these bezels, man, just using this phone is amazing. Just, I don't know. If you're a tech nerd and you're getting into this phone, it just feels really, really good. I do notice that uh, for performance, the, you probably can't tell on here, but Scrolling through this is noticeably more jerky side by side uh, to a Pixel. So while the phone feels fast and snappy and everything, when you're in the settings app, it does feel a little, a little slow here. Everything else you know and love about Google phones, this is pretty much run in stock Android. It's gonna be a very similar experience to your Pixel, uh, albeit not quite as good, and you won't get updates as fast. So this is not on Oreo yet as of this video. They say, I think, that it's going to be here by the end of the year, but we'll see. Uh, the thing is, I was really hoping it would get the updates really, really fast. A little background, this company was started, I think. I don't know if it started or if it's just like a, he's a partner in it or whatever, but Andy Rubin, who, uh, Andy Rubin, is it? I'm having a brain fart. Anyway, basically the father of Android left Android back in, or left Google really back in like 2013 or 2014, kind of been doing a bunch of other stuff as those rich, smart people do, uh, and recently started Essentials. They have like a home, a smart home device and their phone is really what they're kind of famous for. So this is their first attempt at a phone. Uh, and it was, as horrible as this probably sounds to anyone at Essentials, it was a great first attempt, really cutting edge stuff. Uh, it reminds me kind of the OnePlus One that was like this random off brand that made a really high end phone that you could sell direct to consumers. And it was, you know, you cut out the middleman and you sell really high end stuff at a lower price point. Um, and this phone eventually I bought, when I bought it, it was seven, 700, I think, 699. Now it's down to 500, $200 off of that. So at $500, man, and if you don't care about your selfie camera, this is the way to go. Awesome, awesome phone for $500. Uh, if, if you need a better front-facing camera, the absolute best rear-facing cameras, and you want the quickest Android updates, uh, you're probably gonna wanna go with the Pixel, but if you're really into this bezel-less display and you know you don't care about having the cutting edge Android updates really necessarily, this is gonna get them pretty quick uh, and you don't care about the best, best camera, this phone is a great option. Uh, getting a little bit more into the specs, so it has a ceramic back and titanium edges. Now being a gun and gear guy, just the, the fact that it has titanium edges, I was like, ooh, titanium, you know I love some titanium. And that was a big turn on to me. But 
in in real world use what does that mean what it means is the ceramic back is going to be more durable than glass uh, your titanium is going to be more durable than aluminum. So what you have here is a really durable phone. And I've watched, I'm not going to drop test this, but I've watched some drop test videos, Google them, man, or YouTube them. And this thing is insanely durable. People dropping this from, you know, whatever, six feet height. There's, there's, one, there's one drop test of this short guy, and he's dropping it from six feet onto concrete. And he's boom, 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 not even breaking. Not, the front's not breaking, the back's not breaking. And I was just like, it's gotta be camera tricks, but I don't think it is. So really a durable phone without a case, which is fortunate because you're not gonna find many cases for this phone right now. Uh, so what else? What you aren't gonna really notice, well, we are gonna notice it in pictures, but maybe it's hard to tell. This is a very square phone. The edges are not sharp, like, ow, oh, it's too sharp, but compared to other phones out there that are much more rounded, this is very square. What that means in real use is it's not gonna be quite as comfortable in hand. It's not gonna be quite as easy to pick up off a, off a desk either, because for whatever reason, having those little curves really helps your fingers get up under there and pick it up off the desk. So you're not gonna be able to get it up off the desk as easy, uh, and yeah, like I just said, it's not as comfortable in hand. What's nice, I should have mentioned this earlier when I was talking about the cameras, is that the cameras are f completely flush. There's nothing protruding out, out the back of this phone, which is awesome. The Pixel 1 was like that. Uh, the Pixel 1 had, no, it was completely flat on the back, which was awesome. I really like that picture. The, the Pixel 2 has just a really slight bump. Really slight bump iPhone 10 has a huge bump. Oh, I'm not looking forward to, I'm not looking forward to that. So really svelte phone. Uh, the other thing is, like I mentioned earlier, fingerprint magnet. So the other thing is it's a really heavy, heavy phone. Noticeably heavy. You pick this thing up and you're like, the first thing you're like, oh man, that's a heavy phone. And yes, it does feel premium and that's nice, but it's gonna, if you're on your phone all the time, a heavy phone is gonna eventually start to kind of like wear on you. So I would have opted for making it a little lighter, but it is made out of like super premium, robust materials, and that may have something to do, do. that may have something to do with it. Also, you're packing a lot of phone in a small footprint. Uh, the thing is, this is a 5.7 inch display, and this phone is just way smaller, way smaller than a Pixel 2 XL. It doesn't look way smaller, but it's way smaller than the Pixel 2 XL for almost the same size screen. Pixel 2 XL has a uh, six inch screen. This has a 5.7 inch screen. You can see here, this is the Pixel 1. It's virtually the same footprint as the Pixel 1, and the Pixel 1 has a five inch screen, 5.7 inch screen, five inch screen. So you get some of the benefits like the iPhone 10 where you have a nice big screen though you have much more usable screen here because the notch the notch is so tiny on the essential but you have a big screen on a, in a small footprint so what this means in practical use is it's going to be easy to reach the corners of your phone in your hand it's going to be easy to do everything you need to do uh, while you're using the phone while still taking advantage of a massive screen on the front here I say massive, 5.7 inches and massive for a screen these days, but I think it's a great size. I think the footprint of this is perfect for a cell phone. Pixel 2 XL I feel like is a little big. I wish it was a little smaller. I wish the bezels were a little smaller. This size of this, incredible. The thing I mentioned in my, my uh, Pixel 2 video was that, let me just pull up some trending video. Man, there's some lame videos on trending. So we'll just pull up a trending video here is the something about the World Series, and the video is gonna play. So the thing is, when you go wide, you are gonna have bars on the sides here, uh, which sucks, because I wish I could utilize more of the screen. Obviously, some apps will. I'm only talking about YouTube here. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna go full screen. I don't care that the little camera notch is over here. I wanna go full screen. Uh, as far as I know, there's not a button to do it. Uh, on the Pixel, you could pinch to zoom, and it would go full screen. 
but I don't see a button here. You can't pitch to zoom. So I would like to see be, being able to utilize the full screen uh, on you know 16 by nine videos and it will cut off the top and cut off the bottom. But I would like, it's just a more immersive experience. I wish that was a thing in YouTube videos. YouTube's kind of my thing. So yeah, well I wish you could go full screen, not the end of the world that you can't. Maybe they'll release an update. They do seem to be updating this phone a lot uh, due to feedback, which is awesome. So you can look for the phone to get better and better with time, I think. Uh, and also it doesn't have Android Oreo. So when you go home, YouTube's gone. Uh, you don't have it on your screen anymore. You don't have a little picture in picture though. When this does get Android 8, I'm guessing that'll be a thing and that'll be awesome. So I'm not really gonna get into any other features of Android like I did a little bit in my Pixel review because if you're looking to the essential, probably you know about Android already. But then again, if you're looking into the Pixel, you probably know about Android already as well. Anyway, so final thoughts. Is this phone for you? I don't know, I don't know. Do you hate bezels with a passion? Then it could be an option. Do you not really care about having the best camera? It could be an option. Do you not mind a heavier phone? It could be an option. Do you not mind having all the case options in the world? Could be an option. Uh, do you not mind fingerprint magnet on the back? Well, I would put a skin on this personally. Uh, it might be an option. I like it. It's really, I feel like the essential in some ways, it's kind of weird because I don't know exactly who it targets because in some ways it's really a nerdist phone. Nerds like me, tech guys like kind of buying these kind of, not it's not an off brand, it's a major brand, but these kind of off brand new unique phones that aren't super mainstream. And that's what this phone is. While at the same time by its very name and the idea behind it, the essential phone, the essential brand, you don't get a lot of the features that like a tech guy would want. So while I love the phone and I love the hardware, uh, I wish it had a little more uh, software, which is weird because I like vanilla Android. If I wanted more bells and whistles, I'd go for a Samsung phone or an LG phone, which they always have really great bells and whistles and their performance is usually behind the Pixel devices. Uh, this kind of falls more in line with the Pixel device uh, in, in that regard. So I don't really know the point while I was trying, I don't really know the point I was trying to get across there. I, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, cool phone. Bezel, it, bezel or lack thereof is awesome. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the Essential 2. I think they'll learn a lot. Uh, a smaller company like them will learn a lot and they'll be able to adapt. Uh, and maybe they'll launch an Essential 2 in six months or something. Uh, I think sales were much below what they wanted out of this phone. So they dropped the price a ton. It was already a well-priced phone, I felt. Uh, but they dropped it even more. So. 500 bucks. If you don't have a huge budget for a phone uh, and you can't spend, you know, $1,000 on a Pixel 2 XL, good option. Good option for you. All right. I think that's it, guys. As always, take care.